It's the show that magicians around the globe don't want you to see. The Masked Magician is back, out of hiding, daring to expose the world's most highly guarded secrets. You'll find out how they perform amazing appearances, death-defying escapes, baffling levitations, astounding vanishes, mind-blowing sleight of hand, and impossible illusions. No magician is too famous. No trick too big. No secret too sacred. The magician's code will be forever broken on magic's biggest secrets finally revealed. Tonight, the masked magician pulls back the curtain and exposes the secrets to an impossible water escape that defies death and explanation. Flipping a box upside down while the girl inside stays right side up. Slicing a beautiful girl in three and removing her middle. And much more, right now on Magic's Biggest Secrets Finally Revealed. For his first illusion, the magician will present one of magic's deadliest escapes. Here's a reminder. Never attempt any of the magician's dangerous escapes at home. Everyone you see on your screen is a trained professional. Now that the assistants are finished filling the steel drum, the magician wraps on the side and bottom to prove that it's solid. But this tank is only half of what will prove to be a very dangerous illusion. His assistants return with another drum. This one is also solid. And it's empty. We'll get back to this drum in a minute. Right now, it's time to add some sex appeal. It doesn't get much sexier than this. The magician's assistant shows off her latest outfit, suitable for the pool, beach, more perilous illusion. I hope she realizes it's about to get wet. For her sake, the fabric better not shrink. The girl climbs the ladder to get into the upper barrel. She's about to find out if the water is cold, and so are we. Go ahead, honey, take a dip. must be room temperature. Now that she's soaking wet, she's ready to take on the deadly challenge. She inhales deeply, then exhales as she prepares for the big dunk. She's under the water. As an experiment, hold your breath to see how long you'd be able to stay underwater if you were in her swimsuit. A metal lid is clamped into place. In this illusion, the masked magician will attempt to transport his assistant out of the water-filled steel drum into a second drum that will be suspended beneath it. But that's only if she can survive being submerged underwater with no air supply. The assistants converge on the scene to help clamp the second drum beneath the one holding the girl. Are you still holding your breath? She'd better be, or that tank will become a watery tomb. The second drum is now secure, and there's still no sign of the girl. There are no signs of struggle or screams for help as the magician surveys the steel contraption from all sides. He 
gives his magic commands and draws our attention to the tank on top. Now the one below. Is he trying to tell us something? There's no way for the girl to get from one solid drum into the other, not without a blowtorch and 50 gallons of water crashing down onto the stage. Maybe he can give her some magical assistance. He orders the lid be removed, so let's get a good look inside. But I think we'd notice her body if she was in there. She's vanished. But if she's not here, where could she be? Maybe it's worth looking into the bottom tank. The assistants go about opening up the clamps and removing the drum. If she's inside, I'm gonna have to eat my words. Let's watch what happens. There she is, too good to believe. And so is this trick. The mass magician has pulled one over on us again. So how does the beautiful girl get sealed in a tank of water, make a dramatic escape, and reappear minutes later in a completely dry tank? Here are the secrets. When the girl first climbs into the top drum, she displaces some of the water with her body. Well, that's one way to put it to good use. She sinks down into the water and stands up, presumably to allow herself to take a few deep breaths. What you don't know is that the water in the tank is being pumped out through a tube that is hidden in the innocent looking metal frame. The tube runs inside this steel support arm to a hose that runs off stage. The hose is connected to a high power water pump and storage barrel. The pump is operated by a concealed stagehand. This high power device is capable of pumping 50 gallons of water in a matter of seconds. The stagehand opens a valve and starts the pump, which instantly begins to suck the water out of the tank. As the water level begins to drop, the girl slinks down into the tank so that the lid can be secured. As you can see from above, about six inches of water have already been pumped out, barely enough room for her to breathe. Since hundreds of magicians and assistants have lost their lives performing water escapes, an additional breathing tube has been concealed in the lid, just in case something should go wrong. Whenever magicians attempt to pull off death-defying tricks like this, they always build safety features into their designs. This tube and hidden air hole are added protection in the event of an emergency. While the girl is in the upper drum, the lower one is clamped into place. This is when she pulls a concealed hose from the support frame and uses it to suck out the remaining water. Remember, the pump is powerful so it makes quick work of draining the last few gallons of water. The assistants take extra time to secure the lower tank, giving the girl on top a few extra moments to vacuum up the water and slide the hose back into its secret hole. But since the bottom of the drum was solid and held all that water and the girl, how does she get into the drum below? The tank above has a watertight false bottom that is held in place by a rubber gasket and the weight of the water. With the water drained out, she easily breaks the seal and removes the false bottom. It's a tight squeeze, but the girl has just enough room to slip down into the lower tank. This arrow indicates her path, as if you couldn't figure out she's going from the top to the bottom. Here's how it looks from inside the tank. Once she's carefully dropped herself down into the lower drum, all she has to do is reach up and replace the false bottom. Without the lower drum in place, she's happy to show us how easy it is. But the top tank was still full of water when the lid was removed. That's where the pump comes back into play. The stagehand reopens the valve 
and reverses the pump. This draws all of the water back out of the storage barrel and replaces it in the upper drum. Now all that's left to do is to remove the lower drum and allow the girl to make her stunning reveal. A little damp, but lovely as ever. Up next, the secret to tipping a box upside down while its occupant stays right side up. Street magic like floating a dollar bill. Making a coin penetrate a sealed can. Plus, traveling through the air by magic. When magic's biggest secrets finally reveal return. The magician will now attempt to dazzle us with a bit of close-up magic. As always, he shows that his hands are empty, but not for long. He reaches into his jacket and pulls out a paper president. This one is Hamilton. Looks like an authentic, unrigged $20 bill. He crumples the bill, not exactly a federal offense, and then places it in his outstretched palm. Some conjuring and... Yes, it looks like the bill is starting to move. Well, look at that. It's beginning to float. The magician is actually causing the bill to hover in mid-air between his hands. Now with some coaxing, it does a little dance. Then it floats straight up to his hand. He unfolds it, and there it is, wrinkled but unharmed. A genuine $20 bill. So how did the magician make the $20 bill float between his hands? The secret involves a super fine thread used by magicians that is virtually impossible to see. To show you exactly how he did it, the magician will now use a piece of white thread. Before the trick began, the magician took an ordinary roll of tape and attached the thread below the collar of his jacket. The thread runs up to the top of his head, and with more of that tape, is affixed to the back of the 20. This probably isn't what they had in mind when they advertised it as magic tape. Again, he's using white thread, which will show up for the cameras. You can see the thread dangling from his head as he crumples the 20. While he makes his magical gestures, he secretly hooks the thread with his thumb. The thumb acts as a fulcrum or an improvised pulley allowing the magician to raise and lower the bill depending upon how far away he moves his hand from the top of his head. The more slack he takes up, the closer to his hand the bill goes. By hooking the thread between his fingers, he can control the movement of the bill, making it look like it's dancing in midair. Here's how it looked with the very fine, invisible thread. And here is the same movement with the white thread. So that's how he makes the bill float. Sometimes it is done with wires. The magician enters and, as usual, can't keep his hands off the girls. Something tells me this tall, narrow cabinet will play an important role in this next illusion. There he goes, touching the girls again. They tip the box on its side with the aid of a small pedestal that serves as a pivot. Now they tip it again to show that it can make a complete turn. It's a safe bet that someone's getting in that box. 
here she is, complete with the big red arrow. I'm sure we'll find out what that's for in a minute. The magician charms her into the cabinet, which looks like a tight squeeze even for someone in peak physical condition. He opens the door on the front of the box, and there she is. It's a snug fit, all right. Barely enough room for her to exhale, but she doesn't seem to mind. One of the other assistants closes the door, and it's time for the arrow to do its thing. It's attached to the front of the cabinet to indicate which side is the top. This end up, as if we couldn't tell. The magician gives the command and his assistants help him turn the cabinet on its side. Now for the difficult part. They complete the turn so that the arrow is now pointing down. That means the girl inside the box is doing a headstand the hard way. The assistant removes the arrow and the magician steps in to open up another door. What's this? The girl inside is right side up. And the fit is still as tight as her costume. Bet she's relieved to get out of there. And as we can see, she's unharmed and looking great from any angle. So let's recap. The magician coaxes his lovely assistant into this tall, slender cabinet. With the front door open, we can see that she's right side up. The other assistants help him flip the box over. Yet, as if by magic, the girl is still standing upright. How is this possible when there's barely enough room in the box to turn sideways? The secrets lie in the construction of the cabinet and the innocent looking pedestal that acts as a pivot. As the girl steps into the box, she opens a small secret panel. From inside, you can see that this panel gives her access to the hollow pedestal. It's not so innocent after all. With the front door open, we can see that she's standing upright. The door is closed, and the assistant in front attaches the arrow, then blocks the audience's view of the pedestal. This is where the secret move takes place. Here, we can see how the girl inside the box steps into the pedestal and closes the secret panel to hide her legs. What a shame. From this provocative position, she's able to bend her upper body into the lower part of the cabinet, which will, of course, become the top. The move is easy to see with the front doors open. As the magician and his other assistants tip the box, the girl inside gets ready to stand up straight. She's essentially turning with the box. The assistant in front is careful to block the audience's view of the top of the pedestal, otherwise, this is what they would see. Again, the front door of the cabinet is opened to show the girl standing as the box tips upright. It's a tight squeeze, but the girl manages to do a little twist, so she's facing forward. She swings open another secret panel on the opposite side of the pedestal and steps back into the cabinet. This is the reverse action of what she did on the other side. The front door is opened, and she's mysteriously upright. But it's not so mysterious when you know the secrets. Next, the secrets of how street magicians survive being sliced with carving knives. Plus, find out how to baffle the mind with the mysterious powers of ESP. Perform amazing magical transportations. And more. When magic's biggest secrets finally revealed returns. Here's a trick that proves it's never a good idea to play with knives. It involves this very menacing hunting knife. Yep, it's sharp. 
The magician rolls up his sleeve. He's got something dangerous in store. I hope he's not doing what I think he's going to do. If you're easily shocked, now's the time to look away. He takes the knife and, ouch, cuts directly into his arm. The knife has plunged all the way through the skin and muscle, cutting close to the bone. He pulls out the knife and, as if by magic, his arm is still in one piece. But for a trick this gruesome, there has to be a secret. How does the magician make it look like he's slicing into his arm without injury? Look closely. The secret is in the knife. From the back, we can see that the blade slides out from the handle, revealing a semicircular notch. This notch is designed to match the contour of the magician's arm. When placed against the skin and rocked back and forth, the illusion is that the knife is slicing the arm. To remove it, he simply pulls the blade away from his flesh and drops the notch back into the handle. Not so gruesome after all. The magician will now demonstrate his powers of ESP. His assistants wheel in a large slate writing board. He intends to magically write on the board using an ordinary piece of chalk, just like back in school. He also has a small slate and chalk for a volunteer in his audience. Since we're in the secret warehouse, another assistant will stand in for the random audience member. Don't worry, she's not in on the trick. The magician hands her the chalk and instructs her to write a word or draw a shape on the small slate. Again, the magician hasn't told her in advance what to write. Her choice is totally random. She's written mom and drawn two hearts. Ah, oh, how sweet. The other assistants raise a curtain around the large slate so the magician has no way of touching it with the chalk. Using the power of his mind, he will now try to determine the word and shapes from the volunteer's slate. He concentrates and writes in midair. When he's done, he commands the curtain to be lowered. And there it is. Mom. But this picture isn't complete. The curtain is again raised as the magician asks his volunteer to concentrate. He focuses his mind and begins to draw again. Well, there's one random shape. And maybe one more. Let's find out. The curtain is lowered and, sure enough, it looks like he's done it again. He takes the volunteer's slate, and there you have a perfect match. The volunteer is impressed. Maybe that's how he gets all the girls. Did the magician really read the mind of his volunteer? Of course not. Here are the secrets. He selects the girl just as he would select a random audience member. Again, she's not in on it. The girl draws on the slate, holding it up for the camera to see as instructed. Now for the first big secret. The large slate is constructed with a secret hiding place in the base. It's got just enough room for another assistant to hide before the trick begins. When the small slate is held up for the camera, the assistant in the base can see exactly what's being drawn by way of a miniature TV monitor that's attached to the back of the large slate. With the curtain closed, you can see how she climbs out of her hiding place and writes on the slate. Out front, 
the magician is making drawing motions in midair to give the assistant time to write and sneak back into her secret compartment. When the curtain is lowered, it looks like the word has appeared by magic. Amazing. But he's not done yet. The curtain goes back up so the girl inside the compartment can finish her dirty work. She's got to add the hearts. As you can see, without the curtain, she climbs back out of her hiding place, completes the identical drawing, and quickly ducks back down into the base. The audience has no idea how the word and shapes got on the board, and neither does the volunteer. The masked magician has convinced everyone that he has mystical powers of the mind. Next, find out how magicians slice a woman in three and remove her torso. Make an ordinary coin penetrate a sealed can and invisibly fly through space through teleportation. When magic's biggest secrets finally revealed return. Magicians are known to put their gorgeous assistants in danger for the sake of entertainment. The masked man is no exception. In fact, he's mastered the art. Here's his latest torture device, a cabinet that's divided in three. If I know the masked magician, one of his beautiful girls will meet the same fate. Here she is now. Well, the outfit's a two-piece, so she's more than halfway there. And it looks like she knows what's expected of her as she heads straight for the back door of the box. Now that she's inside, we're deprived of her ravishing good looks. So the magician opens a peephole for us to see what we're missing. She's not that happy to see us. Maybe she knows what's coming. Now for her left hand and a little wave. What a tease. And down at the bottom, her right foot. The fishnets are a nice touch. Let's hope we can see them again, along with the legs that go with them. Before things get dangerous, we have to say goodbye to the pretty lady. See you soon. But the magician knows we need someone to look at, so here comes another girl. This one is bearing gifts. Two razor-sharp stainless steel blades. If you're playing along at home, you probably figured that the blades would be inserted into the cabinet and the girl inside. Usually when a blade goes into a body, the insides come outside. Let's hope that doesn't happen here. That's one blade. Now for number two. This one is at the right height to separate the fishnets from the rest of her. With a little luck, this will only be a trial separation. As if the girl in the box hasn't had enough abuse, the magician slides the center of the cabinet to one side, dividing up her assets. Let's see if the girl is still inside and what condition her condition is in as ever, and still breathing in and out as impossible as that seems. Let's see if the rest of her is fully operational. The hand seems to be functioning and ready to be used for its intended purpose. Now for the lower extremities. The foot is still there and the toes work. This is either one amazing trick or one messed up girl. The magician seems to agree, so he slides the center section back in place. 
But remember, even with her middle back where it belongs, the girl is still divided by the steel blades. Until now. There goes the top blade. Now to head downstairs for the bottom one. Time to check the damage. No marks on her face, but she doesn't seem too thrilled, so let's let her out. There she is, still in one magnificent piece and an equally magnificent two-piece. Now that's a great trick. So, how did the magician slice his beautiful assistant in three sections right before our very eyes only to put her back in one stunning piece? The secret is also right before our eyes. When the magician slides the center section of the box to the side, we're not looking through the cabinet, we're looking at a mirror. There is a screen set up to the right of the box that is identical to the screen behind the box. The mirror creates an image that fills in the center of the box that is an exact duplicate of what we think is behind the box. So from the front, it appears that we are looking right through the box to the screen behind. When it appears that her middle is being dragged off to one side, it's actually staying in the same place, right behind the mirror. From behind, we see that there is just enough space for the girl to hide. But what about the sharp steel blades that were pushed into the box? They look solid, but they're really just flexible sheet metal. When the magician inserts the top blade, the girl inside the box is simply bending it down away from her torso. When he inserts blade number two, the girl is gracefully bending it out of the way with her leg. See it coming down from behind the mirror? This allows her room to stick her foot out of the hole when the magician opens the little door. Now for the next secret. How does the center of her body appear to move to the side along with the center of the box? After all, we saw her left hand through the hole. That's all she was willing to show us. The cabinet has a secret trap door inside that gives the girl access to the hole. When the center section has been pulled out to the side, she reaches her left arm across her body through the secret panel and sticks her hand out of the hole. From the front, the illusion that the girl's midsection has been removed is pretty convincing. All the magician has to do now is reverse the process and let her come out for air. Much to her relief, and ours, another beautiful girl who stays that way, with the help of a mirror. Next, the magician exposes the astonishing secrets to making a coin penetrate a sealed beverage can and the ancient art of teleportation. Find out how it's done when Magic's Biggest Secrets Finally Revealed returns. Here's a small trick that anyone can master. The magician starts with empty hands and shows us an ordinary can of beer. It's still factory sealed and, judging by the generic brand, certainly nothing special. Next, he shows us an ordinary coin. Yes, it's true that beer once cost a nickel, but this trick doesn't date back quite that far. With the coin resting on his outstretched palm, the magician forces it through the bottom of the can, as if by magic. Go figure. Nothing in his hand. Yep, there's the rattle, it must be inside. The magician now breaks the seal and the beer begins to flow. He pours it into a glass, careful not to spill a drop of the suds. But where's the coin? Rattle, rattle, rattle. Must still be inside the empty can. Slightly smelling of brew, but still legal tender. 
a good trick that fools them every time. Now for the secret. The magician shows us that the can hasn't been altered in any way. Neither is the coin. So how does he pull off the trick? With a simple touch of sleight of hand. When the magician appears to force the coin through the bottom of the can, he simply allows it to rest inside the bottom lip. Meanwhile, he shows us that his hand is indeed empty. Next, he turns the can upright and the coin drops back into his palm where he can hide it from view. There it is, right where it began and ready for the next piece of business. He secretly manipulates the coin to his fingertips as he displays the sealed can and flips the tab. The foaming beer and his fingers provide the perfect cover as he drops the coin into the can. That is why you don't see the coin being dropped through the opening and sinking to the bottom of the can. He pours the beer as the audience waits in suspense for the coin to spill out. He stops just before it falls so that he can dramatically shake the can one last time and pour the coin into his empty hand. A convincing trick that is simple once you know the secret. The magician enters and shows us three identical steel structures. He wants us to watch carefully as he enters the first one. Next, he calls in one of his assistants. Where would he be without them? She walks around the structure and then joins him inside. But this isn't what it looks like. The girl grabs the magician's wrist and secures him with a length of rope. Another wrist and another line. Looks like the masked magician is going to be tied up for the evening. Nice job, young lady. She certainly knows the ropes. The other assistants join the party and close the doors in front of the magician. And the doors to the other structure. The girl climbs into the center structure and prepares for something magical to happen. With a wave of her arms, she causes the two end structures to rise. Next, she lifts a sheet in front of herself. She raises it once, then twice. What's this? The magician has somehow escaped his bonds and taken her place. The doors to his structure open, but we already knew he wasn't in there. Now for the doors on the other structure. And there's the girl, teleported by magic. An amazing illusion but you know there must be secrets. Coming up, the masked magician will reveal the astounding secret behind his incredible teleportation. When magic's biggest secrets finally revealed, return. How did the magician magically take the girl's place and make her reappear high above the stage in the empty structure? This illusion is full of secrets. The first one happens when the girl takes her walk behind the structure. Below the platform, we can see her legs as she walks by. This proves we can see there's nothing behind or below. This is a key to the illusion, and I'll tell you why in a minute. The magician's hands are tied. Once the doors are closed, the magician simply pulls down the ropes. They're attached to his wrists, but not to the structure. 
He quickly removes them and ducks down out of sight. Now remember seeing the assistant's legs beneath the platform? When she reached the corner, she tripped a line which released a black roller shade. This shade hid the magician's escape from the structure. As we're busy looking at the girl and her legs as she walks behind the middle structure, she trips another release and a shade springs into place behind it. This shade will help hide the magician until he's ready to make his appearance. When the girl first raises the sheet, he climbs up behind it. When it goes up all the way, he takes it from the girl and she jumps back down behind the platform. That's how they make the switch. Here it is from above. It's just that fast. The first structure is opened, and of course, the magician is gone. But there's the issue with the other structure. How did the girl get all the way up there? The secret is that there are two girls. Not twins, but with the right wig and makeup, they are identical enough to fool the audience. When the structures are closed, the double is hiding in place, waiting to make her big appearance. The door's open, and she's a star. It's easy when you've got the right girls and know the secret. Next time, the Masked Magician returns to reveal more of magic's biggest secrets.